Hi everyone, making this video here for everyone considering to buy an EV vehicle. Now, uh, I came from a gas vehicle, then went to a hybrid vehicle, and now an EV vehicle. So I have some, some thoughts on owning a pure EV vehicle as the primary vehicle I drive every day. Um, so I'm going to go into the pros and cons of that. I'm going to go into my thoughts on uh, what you should consider before buying an EV if you're looking to make that jump. And uh, this is the whole gamut, uh, you know, being a new EV owner. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, let's go into the pros. Uh, owning the EV vehicle has been fantastic in terms of no maintenance. Not to say that if you get a hybrid vehicle, there's going to be issues of maintenance problems. But um, EV vehicles, for the most part, have less components. They don't have an engine bay. It's just a battery on the bottom of the vehicle. And it's just a lot less components to go wrong. So uh, maintenance has been phenomenal. Um, there's no oil changes um, with the vehicle. Of course, there's no oil to be changed. Uh, the brakes are kind of like hybrids, right? Where you don't really have to change the brakes until 150, 200,000 miles of these type of vehicles and probably the lifetime of the vehicle. Um, so those are some of the, the pros of it. Uh, another pro is your, and it could be a con, I'm gonna go into detail about that, but the pro is saving on gas. I'm in California, gas is reaching up to $7 for unleaded fuel. Not premium, unleaded, folks. And usually for the rest of the country, that kind of follows. Not to that high of amount of for gas, but it does go up. Other states like Florida and Georgia are reaching about $3.50 to $4 a gallon. And it might even go higher with the Ukraine-Russian situation uh, that we're you know experiencing. You should not face that, but not only the Ukraine-Russia stuff, but also the... The, the Saudi Arabia type of situation too with, uh, with the Biden administration. So gas, in my opinion, will continue to go up. It will not go down. Um, so I am saving on uh, having an EV vehicle. Um, but what I'll go into a little more detail is it depends because there are charging times and the charging times that's most convenient to you that are during the day and maybe the early night until 9 or 10 p.m. Those are the most expensive per kilowatt. So I'm now at a uh, charging station, charging my vehicle, um, as you can see right here. And, uh, you know, it takes time. I, you know, I've been here for now an hour sitting in the parking lot and I felt like I could, I could make a video about this and post it. So, and um, I, I have a 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. So it's a new uh, vehicle. Um, and this is not a slow charging facility or, or station. It's just the way it is. Um, you know, Hyundai and Kia have a faster charging, but again, you have that that fastest that faster charging hits a certain point or limit, and then your it slows down at 80 percent. So um, pros and cons with that. Um, Cons of the vehicle, huge, huge con I'm gonna be able to tell you guys before you purchase an EV vehicle. I never experienced this ever with the hybrid or even gas vehicle, and you probably can guess this, is uh, range anxiety, um, needing to find a working charging station. And um, tonight prompted me to make this video because um, you know, I, I drove to uh, Santa Cruz and Santa Cruz, when I drove there, um, I found a, a charging spot at a Whole Foods, but none of them were working. And I've, I've noticed this, not even at that Whole Foods, but many other locations throughout the Bay Area, these charging stations just don't work. They're out of commission. When they look like they're working, they're not really working. And you're going to have to do this hoop to do where you're driving 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes to find another EV charging station. And the problem is when you get to that EV charging station, it might be full with other people charging their vehicles. Or again, you're, you're experiencing the problem of them not working. And I have tried Electrify America. I've tried EVgo, ChargePoint. These are the three main ones that you're going to, you're going to, kind of face but um, 
the infrastructure is not there. And California has specified not selling gas vehicles by 2030. I think that's a big hoax. I think it's a big marketing tactic. I think they will continue to sell gas vehicles. There's no way in hell that they can build the infrastructure needed for the demand here in California for folks. It, it, there's just no way. No way. And then the grid, in my opinion, would be uh, really overloaded, especially with the, uh, the type of energy we're using in America, which is not nuclear en energy, which nuclear energy is much more easily available, it's cleaner, it's just better overall. Um, you know, it looks like the fan came on for the battery. Wow, okay. <laughs> very interesting so this is the first time i've sit, sat in my vehicle to charge it, and the fan on my ev just went on to cool the battery very unique um so the infrastructure just sucks we don't have the infrastructure i live in a city like i said before that is the epicenter for technology and innovation we don't have the infrastructure here so the rest of america i can only imagine um it's just not going to be there especially for the next decade I think that um, if you are looking to buy EV vehicle, I highly recommend you having a garage or a home or a charging point at your house. And then estimating, you know, the distance you take to go to places. Maybe if you're going on vacation or if you're going traveling, uh, estimating and understanding your range. Uh, and then probably just renting a vehicle if you need to. But again we're not there yet and you know unfortunately i don't have a place to charge in my my garage um but if you do have it more power to you i think it makes sense to have an ev i say go for it it, it um, you know the energy consumption in your home you're able to charge it at certain times where the peak load or the charging um uh you know per kilowatt is going to be a lot less so it's a no-brainer, in my opinion, um, to purchase an EV if you have your own garage or home, okay? If you don't, you're going to have to really reconsider uh, that factor. Because even if you live in an apartment complex or another location that does have it, guess what? There's probably another Tesla that they can use these type of stations. They have an adapter. We cannot use Tesla at the moment. So that's a huge issue. Um, so... Tesla can use it, other EVs can use it, and they're going to be plugged in. So the one and two stations that you have, or three or four or five, they're going to be plugged in by other folks. And you're going to be really frustrated, uh, and you're going to be tense and stressed out. Uh, would I buy another EV vehicle again? Uh, what I would personally do, because I like to travel and and go go out in the outdoor areas or whatnot i personally would like to get a plug-in uh plug-in hybrid so that's the best of both worlds you've got the plug-in range so for example the toyota rav4 prime uh, can go about 45 miles of ev range and you know you you have a, a hybrid capability too where you get roughly around 40 miles per gallon so it's a gas vehicle too. You can build to, um, you know, fill up the gas tank and go. You you don't have that anxiety. So in my opinion, um, if you're looking to do it, I th I say make that first step before you make the whole jump, and then figure out from there. But overall, there are different some pros and cons. I would I would highly uh, consider these factors before you make that purchase. Uh, I do love this vehicle. I think it's a great vehicle, but I think the technology is not fully there yet. Um, I think once we get the solid state batteries or other type of technologies that can be able to charge the vehicle much more faster, uh, not only much more faster in charging, but um, have more range, I think. And then also on top of that, the infrastructure. Those three things, if we can fix that, it would be you would not want to purchase a gas vehicle in my opinion i think it'd be, it would make much more sense to buy an electric vehicle because if those three things are fixed so with that said i hope this was helpful press the like button subscribe for more videos uh, comment down below your thoughts 
um, on if you have an EV vehicle or if you're considering to get an EV vehicle. If you have any questions, happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and maybe not me, maybe another person here that's watching the videos to comment down. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Check you guys out in the next video.